everyone. I am now coming online and getting everything all set up. So excuse me for being a couple minutes late while I'm trying to get this all set up. If you're with me and you can hear me, can you give me a reaction on uh, Facebook over here? I'm also streaming to, let's see, I should be over here at YouTube as well. I'm not quite sure, but hopefully I am. Let's see, I'm gonna click over here and see for a moment. And today, I am going to be coloring live with you. Just making sure that everything is all set up and... Hang on guys, I've got some technical difficulties going on here. Just a moment. All right, let's see now. I think that we've got everything going straight, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's try this again. Hello everyone, I'm Susie Lee Lowe and I am the author of Floral Phrases the adult coloring book and today is my first live color along and I am experimenting with a lot of new tech here that I am learning for the first time so let me know if uh, you're with me leave a comment I'd like to know where you're coming from I'm coloring with you live out of Ohio so let's see today's picture that we're going to be working with <clears throat> I shared this with a group Heather and Friends art group and today hopefully a bunch of you have printed this out and we're going to go ahead and color it together. I give this pay I give a page out every week to my clubhouse members and this is actually an image from that collection. So getting prepared for our Valentine's holiday that's coming up, right? So let's see. Today I'm going to be using my gel pen, or my gel pens and my gel crayons. These are really cool crayons to lay down a base foundation with, I've found. So I like to use this. And then I have color gel pens. I grabbed a little bit of a uh, a small palette that kind of matches with my crayons that I'm going to lay down as a base. I also have a regular paintbrush that I can use. It's going to be used to dry to be able to blend. So let's see now. Here we go. I did a test run of this in a bigger version. Today I'm doing a small version just so I can get it done in a quicker amount of time with you guys but this is how it comes out when you do a printout of the very light grayscale version that I've I've passed out for this one so if you have a hard time seeing it on the camera we're gonna start to pop it out a little bit more with our crayons and our our pens so let's get started here I need to put my glasses on and that way I can see better so I also have to the side, I'm gonna have my cloth in case I need to get my gel pens going again. So I really enjoy gradients and I enjoy blending my gel pens into certain gradient schemes. So I wanna start with a yellow and a green for a gradient. And I am going to do this in, hmm, before I was doing it, yellow and green on the inside to highlight it. But I think I'm gonna go reverse this time just to have fun. So let's see, let's have dark green on the bottom and we're gonna go up to yellow on the top. And it looks like I can see Heather is checking in. Hi Heather, it's so great to have you joining. And I am just now getting started with laying down my foundation color. We're gonna do this here. And hello, Chris. It's so good to see you. Welcome, welcome to my first color along. I am so excited that you're here to join me. Now, one thing I also like to do is I tend to color 
sideways a lot with my crayons. So I end up with these really sharp tips. So when I can go in these in-between sections, I'll be able to get in there a lot easier. So let's see. For this one, we are going to layer the yellow and the green. And this wax is going to help keep the pens wet longer. So I really like doing this because it gives you a little bit more time to blend your gel pens together. And this works with my tan mint gel pens, it works with Color It, so I'm sure there's a lot of different brands out there that this technique is going to work. Um, but I have noticed that some of the pens might have a little bit harder time rolling onto the wax, so you just have to be patient, not put too much pressure. Alrighty then, so. Here we go, and I'm gonna start to layer that in there. Very lightly rolling that pen on there, and then I'm gonna blend it in. And it's gonna fill up some of those white spaces that the crayons couldn't fill in. And let's see, I see. Ooh, so if you've actually had the chance to color this in already, uh, let me know. I would love to hear about it. Maybe even post a picture in the comments for other people to see. This is a group event that I actually created for Heather and Friends so that I can try out all of this live stuff. I've never done live stuff so much before, but you know, everyone's getting into it, so why not? Everyone's hanging out at home, hopefully doing some uh, good therapeutic coloring to keep you all at ease. So now I've got a bit of, I'm kind of meeting in the middle right here. So I want to start to blend my yellows in there. Where, let's see, I'm going to start here. And my pen needs to get a little bit going. And I'm going to blend that up into my green. I think I might need a little bit more when your gel pens are really nice and wet, it mirrors them across a lot better. <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. That's lovely. And <clears throat> I hear my camera just went out, so I'm going to reset it really quick. So give it a moment to come back, everyone. And there we go. We're back. So I'm also working with other tech that I'm starting to learn more. Uh, we have a Nikon camera. It's a DSLR camera that usually we'll use for uh, taking pictures. And they also have the ability to do webcam functionality. So it's nice to be able to zoom in and show everyone because I have this nice camera set up to be able so we've got a lot of people I see chatting over here. Hello everyone. Hopefully everyone's having a good day. So what kind of stuff do you guys like coloring? Can you tell me what your favorite type of coloring pages are? Today we're just doing a, a quote page. This is just some nice text on a page to send off a message. I'm brightening it all up and smoothing that all in. Bring some more of that. My pen, I think I used a lot of this yellow before, <clears throat> and it's having a hard time coming out. So I might just do yellow and green gradient on the L this time, and I might start to go and fiddle around a bit with my color scheme. There we go. I really enjoy these kind of quote pages that can be put up on the wall so that it can inspire me throughout the day or put them in a book of quotations that I enjoy. And a lot of my work is actually <clears throat> all about inspiring quotations and imagery. So I have a lot of sacred geometry and spiritual type stuff and all these positive motivational inner dialogue kind of pages. 
but you'll also find lots of uh, mandalas. I've got mandalas. And let's see, Heather likes all kinds of pages. What do you all, line art? You prefer line art? Yes, I am a big fan of doing line art mostly myself. Oh, Maria Whittle. I'm gonna have to see and look into her work. Abstract art, and yes, I'm a big, when I, when I do actual paintings and things like that, I'm all about the abstract work. And some of it can translate over into uh, coloring pages in the future. I've actually got some stuff that started out either in a sketchbook or on a painting, and then I've translated it over to a coloring book. Let's see now. I really like how I've got this going. I want to put a little bit more green in here. I'm not really satisfied with that transition right there. So let's see now. Now, can everyone hear me okay? Because <clears throat> I tend to I tend to be soft spoken. So let me know if you're hearing me okay, and if I need to speak up. So any tips that I can do better, I am looking forward to hearing all about it. And get that nice and blended in there. Beautiful, that looks a little better. I dig that. I really like that. So I think I wanna add a little gradient in the middle part. And I'm gonna do a blue and a pinkish color, I think. So I'm gonna layer in just a little bit of my wax down for my base. And I'm gonna do a little bit of an opposite of the color wheel. So green and red here, right? And usually yellow, bluish, whatever kind of opposite here. So it'll help it pop out, I think, if I blend these. It's gonna be a little purple in the middle. Blue on top. And I'm so excited that everyone can hear me yeah, my uh, husband helped me with all the technical support. He has all the fancy equipment, and right now I'm actually using a Blue Yeti microphone. So hopefully it's nice and clear for everyone to even hear me. So I did my base, and now I'm going to add some gel on top and start to smooth it into my grains. So hopping back and forth. I am so happy to hear that you love my voice. Thank you very much. All right, I know sometimes we think that we don't like our voices. It just sounds different to us than what other people are hearing. It's interesting how the brain translates things. I know when I hear my voice in recording, I'm like, oh, I do sound different, don't I? <laughs> All right, so bringing in that pink color Blending it in here over my crayons. Yeah. So I really love gel pens. That's definitely one of my favorite mediums to work with. <clears throat> what does everyone else like to work with? Is there anything is that's your go-to kind of a color? There we go. Blend that in, that blue down into that more blend that down Ooh, let's mix it up a little more down in there all right I've got a lot little lovely purple here so it's a blue to a purple to a red pink almost looking red underneath and <clears throat> so here we go we've got the L in there now, another thing that I like to do, another technique that I like to do <clears throat> is just smearing it on my paper. So we have a banner going all the way around here. And another way that I can pop this letter out is to color in that banner, right? But if I don't want to go and fill in a whole big space with gel pen, I like to use this technique. So with the purple, let's go ahead and I'm going to make a line here. Smear it out, smear it out, kind of blend it into a white. So it's kind of dark to light here. And then going around, and I'm going to keep doing this and just smear it. And you can use other things like your brush, but I like my finger there. It's just a lot quicker to do it that way. Yeah. 
pencils and markers are a great combination. I really love laying down a nice bright marker foundation and using the pencils to do my shading so that it helps bring out that depth that you can't always get with markers unless you're using a nice alcohol marker that's very easy to blend. But I like coloring with Sharpies. So those, I haven't really figured out a very easy way to blend those. Um, I'm sure if there are techniques that you guys know of, I would love to learn about it too. So yeah, markers are definitely a good go-to. Let's see, let's bring this down here. And my L is definitely starting to pop out more with this technique. And you gotta do it quickly while it's wet. I think that's the reason why I really love my color it gel pens. They release a lot of good thick pigment nice and wet onto my paper and it makes it really easy to do these kinds of blending. So what about when you're coloring? Is there any kind of music that you guys like to listen to? What about that? I would love to hear about that. And by the way, I am streaming this live to Facebook and YouTube, but I'm really paying attention to my comments over on Facebook because this was intended for an audience over there. But I am practicing getting this over to my YouTube channel as well. So if I miss your comments anywhere, you know, I will definitely be going back into these comments later on both areas and uh, checking it out. Yes, I love this smearing technique too. It really helps to fill in a, a big space with an idea of color and helping to uh, outline and harden that line art that I, I have right there. So typically, if you were to print this in the black and white line art, you would be seeing that dark black right there. But with this technique, I'm making that a much more light looking. It's not as harsh of a black line. Instead of now it's purple and it fans out with the smear. Crime series while you're doing coloring. How fun. <laughs> All right, this Nikon camera just went out again, so I'm just going to reset it again so just a moment and, and I believe you can all hear my voice while I'm doing this hopefully let's see what's going on over here it looks like I might have possibly lost my feed over at Facebook is that true can you guys see me or am I coming right back on give me a reaction if you can see me and let's see if I can fix my setting up it's quite possible that I might have some th technical difficulties going on here, guys. So, if you have lost me over at Facebook and I can't get this back on, I uh, and it keeps doing these funny delay things. And <laughs> this is so funny. And all the things that you're not supposed to do are happening right now when you go live. <laughs> So let's see, restart my camera one more time and give that an attempt and see if that's going to help us out here. I know that Facebook pr Live producer likes to take over my camera and it makes things very odd. Let's see now, anything that I can do over here and I, can I change my camera setup on me? No. Okay. I think, <clears throat> yes, I do have it in the event link. If you, if anyone wants to help share that link, I can also quickly go over there and try and grab this link for you. I had a sus suspicion that Facebook was going to do this for to me. So I am going to get this link for you guys. Look at that. I think I actually have a quick direct link for you. And I'm going to put
with that. Over here. Oh dear, I just lost everything it seems like over on Facebook. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Well, hello everybody. I should have probably created a pre-recorded uh, commercial or something for you guys to watch. <laughs> While, uh, while I had all this technical difficulty going on, huh? <laughs> so let's see now. I am going to see if I can comment over on Facebook with the link over to YouTube. So there you guys go. Now over on YouTube, I'm going to go take a quick look over here. And it seems that I have a stream going over here just fine, I believe, don't I? So let me know. I'm sure. <laughs> I now am starting to learn a whole bunch of new things all of a sudden. So I have a chat window now on my right. So chat here. Yes, it looks like a chat window over there on YouTube. And look at that. I am now learning so many different things about how to have this stuff going for me. All right, so I'm full screen over here. And we're gonna get this coloring going back again. So I really think that over on YouTube, I am live and good. So if you can see me over on YouTube, go ahead and give me a comment in the, in the live chat so that I know that we're connected over here too. Now, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, Facebook, I seem to, every time I try to use Facebook, I have a problem with uh, staying connected over there. And hi, Heather, it's great to have you over here now watching on you. Start streaming again, so now the stream should reconnect me back over on YouTube. So, here we are, back connected. I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, Be Right Back sign down. And hi, Jill, I see you commenting over on Facebook saying you're watching. That's wonderful that you've connected over on YouTube. Thank you for your flexibility. This has definitely been a fun experience trying to learn on the fly with you guys. So thank you, Heather, for confirming that I'm fix fixed over on YouTube. Wonderful. So now here we go. I'm going to go ahead and continue working on my page here. Woo, now that that distraction is all done and over. <laughs> so let's see what kind of gradient should I do maybe I can go back to a different gradient combination on this O or I can just continue with my background smearing technique hmm you know I think I'm going to continue with the purple and it's going to help pop out this loves text for you guys who are watching the video <clears throat> so I definitely have enjoyed learning about your your favorites over on Facebook so maybe you guys can continue telling me I think we, we were interrupted when you were telling me about what kind of stuff you like to watch or listen to while you're coloring right now I don't have anything going but I typically have music going on in this house because we are definitely music fans To scoot this over a bit so I can see that chat better over there awesome wonderful so yeah, my type of music that I really love listening to would be things like jazz I love old jazz musicians and then I am really big with piano so classical pianos and stuff would definitely be a go-to especially early on in the day well, if it's at night time, though, and my kids have gone to sleep, I'll be watching some adult cartoons. <laughs> Maybe not cartoons, but, you know, the adult type of uh, topics that my young ones can't be watching. So, we like superhero movie shows and movies like that, and exciting uh, adventure type things. I, do, I think someone mentioned that they were into like crime shows. I remember when I was younger, I was very much into crime shows. So I can definitely sympathize with that kind of uh, lineup for the evening. And bring the 
this O and popping it out more. Now the other thing that I tend to do, <clears throat> some people when they color, it's all about perfection and oh my goodness, I didn't get it right and they just want to throw it out the window. My daughter tends, both of them actually, but the five-year-old more so, she sometimes gets into that mode, I don't like it, but I've been trying to explain to her that it's okay if you don't like it and if there's a mistake because you can actually a lot of times incorporate your mistakes. So my smudging right now that I've been doing since I haven't been wiping on here, my excess stuff, <clears throat> it's actually been going into my lettering, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. If anything ends up going in there, like if I'm doing a squiggly line or something and it went over a line, I'll probably come back and balance it out with more squiggly that are intentional. So that's why when I color, I might not always be trying to target for accuracy. I'm just going for the general idea that I'm trying to do. And then later, I can fix it with intentional mistakes, if you want to explain it that way. They're intentional mistakes. <laughs> Yes, this definitely helps to use your gel pens and make them go further for filling in a nice backspace. So let me ask you guys this. When you color, do you tend to like to go for your subject, your main subject foreground first, or do you like to color your backgrounds first? Which ones do you like? I think I generally go for the main subject usually but sometimes I like the backdrop too like right now I like doing it because it's helping on camera to bring out my text that I'm working with so there's the O now it's much much more defined up on the, on the screen I can see so let's see, I'm going to go ahead and continue outlining all of my letters here. And moving down on the view. And here we go. And down there. And let's see. I really like how that is. That is definitely bringing out my line art for the lettering. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Purple and green, I think, are one of my favorite color combinations. So if you were to actually say what your color palette is, what would you say that your color palette is? I know sometimes it changes, but I, I always like to say that, let's reset that camera because I heard it just go out. <clears throat> I like green and purple combination, always. It's always been my favorite ever since I was young. Thank you for the pretty purple comment. I think this is beautiful too. And since these are glitter pens, the glitter style, it spreads a lot of that glitter and it's gonna shimmer for me when the light hits it. Mm, there we go. Yeah, I really like that lettering coming out for me. And there we go. So now for this event over at Heather and Friends, thank you everyone for joining me. Be sure to, to color yours and submit it underneath the thread. And that way I can add you to a drawing that I'm going to be doing a week from now to find a winner. And you are going to be able to download some free sheets from my website, suzylelo.com. I have quite a collection going now of single sheets and digital books. So <clears throat> if you don't want to get a physical copy, physical copy of my coloring books because I have two coloring books that are available in print. You can also get it digitally to download on my website. 
But if you're not interested in an entire book, I've got a few select pages also available. And <clears throat> then I also have, like I mentioned earlier, my Clubhouse subscription, which this page happens to be a part of. And every week I give my subscribers a free new coloring page to download. And that page will be available for my members for free uh, for about a month until it cycles out and new ones take its place. But if you miss it while it's free, as a member you also get discounts and freebie coupons and things like that that I give you if just in case you did miss it. <clears throat> So thank you, Heather. I'm so excited to hear that you love the clubhouse. I love it too. It's really nice and intimate right now. Since it's a new clubhouse, it's very fresh. I think I started it back in October or November, I believe it was, whenever I first published my first coloring book, which was Animal Fun, a kid's coloring book. And I originally intended for the adult coloring book to be first, but my children were definitely excited about me making coloring book pages and kept saying they wanted things like a unicorn. You know, kids love unicorns, huh? Oh, who am I kidding? Adults do too. <laughs> and one of my pages actually says that I don't feel like adulting today and it features a unicorn on there. So that's a fun one to, to color in which I did a couple of times digitally. And hi, Tanya, it's good to see you over here at YouTube. Thank you so much for uh, being flexible and coming on over here to check it out. I definitely feel like I always have more success on YouTube. Let's see there. And I'm so happy to hear, Heather, that you love the floral book. It was my way of turning my frown upside down because just like everyone else, last year was tough. It was really tough to stay positive with your inner dialogue, with all that was going on in the news and all the scary things that people were saying and all of our loved ones getting sick. So it was definitely a very stressful time period. You know, people are losing their jobs and things. So to me, I felt that I needed a mission and it was all about positive inner dialogue and I'm all about transforming your inner dialogue because if you continue with the bad talk inside of your head your brain actually produces those bad chemicals to go with it so it's gonna make you feel angry or scared or all those yucky feelings so I don't like that so much so my floral phrases book was all about creating poster type imagery that can be used to help us transform our inner dialogue. And I actually did a book release when I first released the book. And at that party, I gave away a free page in the style of floral phrases that said, this too shall pass. Now it's a very powerful statement that a lot of people have heard. And I'm not sure, does, does anyone here know where this story even comes from? because I think there's a lot of confusion about its origins. And from my understanding, this too shall pass is actually a Sufi tale. So I actually have Sufi tales book and it has lots of wonderful poems and stories that I would love to share with you guys one day. So if you ever want to hear about This Too Shall Pass, I can share the story at my website. Uh, maybe I can even do a quick reading since you guys enjoy my voice. And it's a really amazing story to remind us that nothing is permanent. So just remind yourself that it, things can change and it can change for the better, especially if you have positive mindset that's helping you produce those happy chemicals that allow you to do things in our, our uh, physical realm. So like in your brains and up in the higher chakra areas or if you, know, if you have a higher power like God or someone, you need to be able to bring that down into the physical plane. But in order to do that, we need to be 
physically capable. So we need to be steady, we need to be active and healthy. And I really feel like our the brains and our chemicals help with that so much. So how you think really affects that and how you eat and how you drink and even the types of music and TV and stuff that you watch. So I, that's what my book was all about for me was to make sure that I had something to focus on to share with others that was all about those happy chemicals in your brain. <laughs> and I tell you, one of the things that I like to say to people, one of my favorite rushes, oxytocin. That is my favorite chemical in the brain that you could produce. And one of my favorite ways to do that, big hug. Give me a big hug. I really miss being able to give people lots of hugs these days since uh, we're not hanging out in person as much anymore, are we? But that's okay. Because through got good conversation, you can also produce that as well. So having this ability to hang out with you guys online like this is kind of a fun experience. So thank you guys for joining me and allowing me this opportunity to see how it is to do a live color along with you guys. <clears throat> now over on my YouTube channel I have been starting to produce some uh, how-to videos and I haven't yet done a done this technique that I'm currently doing in my gel blend blending series but this was going to be one of the next techniques that I was going to show in that series and this is a very quick and easy technique to use you don't even need to have something like your brush which I used when I did this just use your finger and just smear it over and I like this technique too because it makes me feel more comfortable with uh, the smudging and the smearing. Some people don't like the smearing and smudging and I say embrace it. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't get too many visitors, I know. It's unfortunate that everyone is, I hear about all these lockdowns that are happening everywhere. I'm personally coming, living in a very small village in Northeast Ohio, so it's a very quiet situation here. And I'm, I, I like that we have a quiet life. <clears throat> we have family that's close by. So we have our small network of friends and family that we can still interact with. <clears throat> we just need to make sure that everyone is, of course, healthy and happy, right? And that's another reason why I feel this book is helpful in this time period because those happy chemicals in your brain also help with your immunity. So... If you're producing those happy chemicals and your mind and your body and your spirit, everything is all in harmony and balanced, it's a lot easier to keep those nasty viruses at bay. So our bodies are pretty amazing at how they function. I've always said, wow, the human body and the human mind is so amazing and fascinating, especially since... I started hold on I'm resetting my camera guys ever since I started raising my two daughters so five-year-old now and a three-year-old and goodness their brain power when they're young that's pretty amazing and to see the way that they advance I will just be coloring my stuff with my daughter and she'll ju I don't have to tell her or explain to her she just watches and she does it. She just repeats it. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's see now. I'm going to keep getting this out here. And we've got a lot of my loves popping out now. And this is starting to really look good on camera. And let's see. Hold on, that's so beautiful over here. So what are your guys, some of your happy phrases that you like to tell yourself? Especially if you're starting to see your in, inner dialogue go to, down the wrong path. And is there any kind of go-to messages that you guys like to tell yourself? Or maybe you already have some kind of affirmation poster up. Kind of similar to my floral phrases that you have up on your wall. 
I would love to hear about that. Tell me about those. I'm actually also a, a laser engraving artist, and I like to create things on wood. Uh, but I've also done things on acrylic and some bits of stone and things like that. So I like to put mantras or affirmations onto plaques. So maybe one day I'll get to show off some of those to you guys too. So a mantra Tanya says is stay out of trouble. And that's that's good idea is to stay out of trouble. I know, but sometimes getting into trouble is good. Just don't get caught, right? No. <laughs> As long as it's good, healthy trouble and no, no one's going to get hurt, I say. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> Every little thing is going to be all right. I agree. That's in a song, right? I'm starting to hear it in my head, I believe. <laughs> If you don't know, it's confusing, of course. But the more you do and the more you learn, the better you get and the better you understand, huh? When my girls start to say things like, I can't do this, and I will respond with, yet, you can't do this yet, but with practice, practice makes better. I know people are used to the phrases practice makes perfect but I grew up with a grandma who always encouraged me to be better and not perfect thank you Heather I like how this is starting to turn out too. one of my favorite techniques for a backdrop and it's really cool when it's all finished I will show you my finished sample here in just a moment. But here we go. That really pops out that lettering. Oh, thank you, Jill. I'm so excited to hear that you're enjoying my coloring. If you guys hadn't seen my preview colored image, I, I had it as the banner. So here is the technique that I'm showing you right now. I was much lighter, I believe, the first time I did it, and this time I'm going much thicker. So I really enjoy the way that that is coming out. Now to bring this outer part of my banner, I'd like to start to bring this smearing technique back in the other direction so that it fills in lightly on these in-between spaces, but I'm going to start to get a darkened line art going right here. So, same technique, we're going to keep going. And I'm so excited to help share this kind of idea with you guys. And if you end up sh using this technique on any of your coloring pages, I would love to see it. So if, please do tag me in any coloring groups or even on my fan page. And I will take a take a look at it, and you know, even if it's someone else's artwork, because I love seeing other people's artwork too. Yes, it is. You're right, Jill. This phrase is from a song. There's actually a couple of songs I believe that uses this phrasing. Oh, Cadence says, "I love you. I love your stuff." Puffman XX. Everyone, say hello to my husband checking in over at Nana's. Hello everyone, I'm so happy that you guys get to hear from my family. <laughs> I think my family, especially Cadence and Harmonix, our daughters, they have to be my biggest fans. And let me tell you, my husband even had the opportunity recently to color with my Color It gel pens. And he said, I think I can definitely color more can you get me some color adult coloring pages that I can do that I would like? And he is all about the dragons. So he's actually currently working on a dragon. And I'm going to be working on a few more dragon pieces that I can release into my clubhouse. Hmm. Oh, how fun. This is exciting. And you know, there's always that fear when you first do your live show and it's like well what if someone doesn't watch and like the the tips that the big 
big players tell you, it's like, oh, don't worry about it. If no one's watching, it's okay. It doesn't matter. But here it is. We have a big old party going on. All right. So now that I'm going around my banner, look at how all that's nice. Popping that out. Oh, I love that. Oh, Heather, that's awesome to hear that your husband colors too. I know that they're... There is quite a stigma out there that men don't color, or just like adults don't color. And harmonics, I love you, love you, love your stuff. Oh, I love you, baby girl, and you are your big sister, and I love you, my husband, my beautiful family. <laughs> yeah, I really like how this banner is popping out. So for my clubhouse members, I also do special requests for them first and foremost. Um, if you're not in my clubhouse, you're going to have to pay for my time because <laughs> I am I am a, a designer and I do have to be paid for my time, right? But in my clubhouse, whether you've uh, got a club card or you uh, bought my books to gain entry for a time, I like to pay attention to your requests first, so I like to hear about these things, and I've already had a couple of requests for more dragons, so you know that I'm going to be throwing some dragons in there soon. Yep, that's, yes, <laughs> that was the dragon I was talking about, it was the dragon that I was sharing with you, my dear husband. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this is the banner is popping out so beautiful. <clears throat> this also, like I said, is a nice way to do so you don't use up all of your gel pens. Even though a lot of these can they come come with refills, my colorets and my tan mitts, they do come with refills. But let's let's face it, we all do a lot of coloring. <laughs> so if you can find any technique like this that helps fill in that idea of color and give a fun texture. I really love that texture. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> oh yes, I agree. Well, when, when he's done coloring his dragon, I am gonna definitely share that with everyone so that he can showcase his artwork with you guys. All right. I can actually hear my cat purring over here somewhere. <laughs> Does anyone have uh, pets in their home? And do their pets like to interrupt you while you're coloring? I know I've had times where the cats like to say, take over my lap or lay down on my pens <laughs> or take my pens away. We have cats that like to knock things off of the table. So if I have my color palette out, they might actually try and steal some of my pens. <laughs> All right, let's see. Five dogs, wow, and two cats. That has got to be a lot of love in that house. That's amazing. Yeah, we just have the two cats, Storm and Lightning, and then we have a tank full of fish and I need to reset my camera really quick guys so here I go coming back online and now you should see me again so this is definitely one of those things to learn about our technology and figure out how to fix but thank you everyone thank goodness over at YouTube it's really good to reconnect my stream very very fast so I've been very impressed with YouTube's te technology and, ooh, five chihuahuas, Jill. That that definitely sounds like it's going to be quite a, a loud house sometimes when they get excited, I bet, huh? I, I've met a lot of chihuahuas, and they are definitely very vocal. They like to talk. I actually, in my childhood, from my history, uh, we had a lot of Basenjis in our family. Has anyone heard of Basenjis, the barkless dog? quite the opposite of a chihuahua <laughs> but they are they're beautiful dogs and instead of a barking they actually yodel which can be kind of funny so look at that I am very pleased with the way that backdrop banner came out 
And I'm so happy that I went in that, that direction because it helped pop out the loves text here. Oh, I bet they are, darling Jill. I, I know that the ones that I have met, once I got to know them, they were very, very amazing personalities. I think just like any animal, they are all got their unique qualities to get to know. So let's see. Now I showed you guys how I like to layer down my wax crayons first and put some gel on top and then blending. Blending like so, right? Now, let's see, what other thing can we do? I've got an idea. Let's start to work on some of these green parts here as far as trying to turn it into that leafy kind of look. So I'm gonna work with yellow and green. And then I'm gonna bring in little bits of blue, I think, when I'm doing some of my shadows. So I'm gonna have a lot of that yellow in the front and green to blend. So it's gonna be kind of like a greenish yellow uh, foliage. And then my dark shadows I'm gonna do with this one. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna lay these down thick. And one technique that I like to do is I like to just lay it down nice and thick and I'm gonna blend them while it's wet. So when you have your pen upright, it brings all that ink down and it comes down really nice and full. Then when I, you'll see me angle sometimes possibly and I might just be actually stirring it so not as much ink is going to be coming out. And I've actually had questions about how to get rid of your pen streaks. So those pen marks when you're coloring on there, to me I feel that that's from pressure. Now these are ballpoint tips and if you put too much pressure on it, the ball is gonna kind of push in there and you're gonna start to indent your paper or the ink and pigment already on there with the side of the barrel instead of the ball itself. <clears throat> so I like to make sure that I am very light-handed with my pens when I'm blending this way. And I like to also keep them, I, I, I try to keep them loosely in my cap so that I can swap back and forth really quick. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with, let's see, we'll start up at the top because I think at the bottom, I might, when I'm moving this around, it might get covered up by my text on the screen and stuff. I've been having fun learning about all this tech. It's amazing to see all this stuff out there. Oops, I wanted to start with a little green first. So another thing that I do is I like to start with my dark, colors first and blend in my light colors and that way that yellow is going to stir up that green a bit into the yellow and my yellow is becoming like a yellow green until I move away from there and then we're going to have that yellow. So I've got quite an interesting green in here with just two colors so far and I can keep going. I want my darks and greens on the bottom and then later I'm going to go through with my blue and play around with that too. So right now it's just about the yellow green. Yellow green because this is trying to give the idea of some plants like it's the stem and I love flowers and stuff. I actually grew up most of my life in California where there was a lot more sunshine, not as much water, <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed all the sunshine and how you can grow things year round. Over here, it's a little bit tougher in Ohio because we have the seasons and I am still learning about those seasons. And it looks like my pen's not giving up that ink as easy. So I gotta stir it up over there. And the other thing too is I can also bring in my pen, <clears throat> my paintbrush if I don't like the way that it's blending and kind of mix it up a bit with just that. All right. You can even just smear that up. And, <clears throat> oh yeah, a lot of people are actually, Heather, surprised when I say, oh, I love blending with gel pens. And they go, wait a minute, you can blend your gel pens? Yep, 
one of my favorite things to do, rainbow gradients. I love blending my gel pens into rainbow gradients. 17 inches of snow. My goodness, that's a lot. That is a lot. So look at that. I really like the way that's coming out. And I'm going to start to bring this one down here. So let's see. I'm going to have some dark in here. <clears throat> we actually got <clears throat> recently some new inner, uh, some snow tubes for the girls to be able to use. But we never really got a whole bunch of snow to use it. And then when we did get enough snow, it was disappointing because it wasn't quite the product we hoped it was. <clears throat> Excuse me while I clear my throat a bit. Here we go. And bringing this green up. Blend, blend, blend. Add more dark in here. And this is really important to lay down your pen initially thick. Otherwise, it's a little too hard to get that blending option in there. <clears throat> so now I can scribble and stir. So now I've got a yellow green coloration moving through there. Lovely. Oh, you've tried some. Yeah. So practice makes better, though, right? <laughs> and I think that I've also noticed. With color it pens, I have more success blending. With the, my tan mitten set, even though it was a, they they call it the 240 set, and it's it's not quite 240. It comes with the refills, but not all of those pens blend very well. Like the metallic pens in that set have a hard time blending, and uh, I want to say even some of the pastel ones I kind of had issue with. And I, I don't do the, the standard pens or any of that. Those are perfect for writing with. <clears throat> so let's see. I want to add a little bit more with this here. And, <clears throat> oh, Jill, I'm so done with winter too myself. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait to, for us to start working on our garden. So I'm going to start to add a little bit of shading under darkness under here with my blue. And it's almost like I'm doing my technique with here, but with the brush. And I'm adding it to where that line art is, and then smoothing it out and blending it. I'm kind of brushing it back into the backdrop a little bit. So it's kind of almost like a shadow shading kind of thing going on in there. So I'll add my pens down there, smooth it in. And woo. I had a fun, interesting little flare there with my pen, but that's okay. I'm going to add a little more ink there, and I'm going to intentionally bring it back out to balance that out. There we go. Look at that. That's turning out pretty cool. Ah, let's see. Super doodle pens you're asking about, Jill. I, um, you know what? I might have a couple. Well, what are these? These are actually super gel pens. These are my very old pens that I had a long time ago. I don't think I've actually used Super Doodle yet, but my neighbor has Shuttle Art, and she says that those are really nice, and she said that she would let me try them out. I'm actually thinking of doing um, possibly... Hold on, I'm resetting my camera, guys, because it wants to do its reset thing again. But I'm actually considering to do some versus videos. Would that interest anyone if I were to do some comparison videos between the gel pens that I have access to? So I've got Color It and I've got uh, Tan Mint here. And then I can also probably, my really, really old pens, I should have enough ink in there to fiddle around with. So those would all be. Pen, um, sh and then the shuttle brand that my neighbor has. She already said that, oh yeah, I could borrow them. So I'm excited about that opportunity. So see how that blue really helped t to give that shading right down there, that shadow. Oh, I love the way that looks. Yes, you definitely need juicy, juicy pens. And I think that's why when you start to also go to the higher grade, artist grade, 
type of products, you're going to have more pigment available per, in that juice, the juice that's coming out of your pen. So like it's a much denser pigment uh, that's coming out with it. So that's one thing that you'll, if you ever get in, I'm a big watercolor person. So if you ever do watercolor and you know this, the difference between student grade and artist grade, it's that amount of pigment that's in there. To me, it's so much easier to work with more pigment. And I think that it's also, there are certain types of uh, pigment have different elements inside of them that in the artist grade, it might be a, a more professional quality where in the student stuff, you're gonna find that they're, um, what do you, the, the, the fake stuff, not as good stuff. In, in my artist grade stuff, I have things like actual gold pigments with actual gold pieces in it. And have you ever done watercolors with gold? Watching the gold dance through the water? <gasps> wow, it's mesmerizing. Mm-hmm, I love it. So yeah, there we go then. I really love that. That really turned out cool and that helped pop that out a bit more. So we can see that I've got Oh, you know what? I am going to laugh really quick right now because I did my darkness on top instead of on bottom. That's because I'm coloring this upside down and <laughs> I'm still getting used to that concept because uh, I initially was thinking about my lighting source coming from the top and I forgot that my top is my bottom right now. So I'm giggling at that right now. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just keep running with it. Maybe I can do my darkness on the outside so that I can do something like brightness on the inside so even though I made a mistake here I can rethink my future and maybe I can do some kind of interesting glow behind the banner that's gonna suggest that there's light coming out of here and that's why I have dark here now for me I think my favorite recommendation for gel pens as far as what I've been using would be my color red pens. These are the ones that I'm most successful with with the entire case. And the cool thing about these guys too is they come in a nice case that can keep them organized for me. And let's see, they give you a couple of free coloring pages even too. And I have a nice little card that they come with and so I can do my colors and this is a nice way that I can check out when I'm working on a color palette and trying to pick stuff. Yes, I know when doing live we do have to color upside down and it's it's quite a different way of doing things but I am very excited at being able to practice this with you guys. So thank you guys for coming and joining me today so that I can experience this and doing this live but like I said earlier just because I made a mistake doesn't mean I can't fix it and the rest of my coloration can actually include this mistake so I just have to mentally remind myself that that's where I'm gonna have darkness and let's see another technique that could be helpful to remind myself about that darkness is I can even bring in say pencils or something um, I'm just gonna wing it here. I'm gonna grab a couple pencils here. So let's see. I'm using blue for the idea of the darkness. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a blue pencil here and I'm gonna lightly color up here to, as a reminder that I want these up here. So just lightly give it that shading there and then I'm gonna have dark under here, so here, so this is where it's all gonna be, and maybe a little bit under here. So just enough that it's a reminder for later, because sometimes we start coloring and then we'll forget, because it takes a long time. We might actually pause what we're working on and go and continue another time. So this kind of marking helps m remind me later when I get there that I want that to be there instead. Now these pencils that I'm using, in case anyone is curious, 
I've got Rafine Marco. So the, these are very, very vivid when you color with them. So I'm being very light and not laying it down too thick. And let's see, I wanna remind myself that now on this side, I want them to be up on this part. So I'll just give it a little indicator with my blue. And that way when I do go in and use my blue gel pen, it's actually gonna cover it up enough that you're not gonna see that anymore. <clears throat> and then I've got my darkness again over here, like so. I'm gonna have it up here, like so. And then a little bit here, and there. So now I'm gonna remember, because I've got these really light pencil marks that'll give me that cue when I go around here. So that is a nice quick little tip that I like to share. And I'm so excited to be sharing these tips with you guys. I'm glad you guys are able to learn something new with me. I also love learning something new and I think it's funny when people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I like to say, you know what? You sure can. It's through something called neuroplasticity. The more you practice it, the better you get, and you're going to create those pathways in your brain, and it's going to become permanent. So until the day I die, I plan to keep learning. I don't know about you guys, but I plan to keep on learning, especially since I have my young children right now. They're helping me relearn things, and it's so much fun, like math. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think I want to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do this heart over here so that I can show you another blending opportunity. And let's see. Let's do what color should I do? I like I like doing that blue and pink coloration. That kind of ends up with a little bit of a purple in the middle. We kind of had that happening here. And the nice thing about picking your color palette ahead of time you can mix these colors all the way around for balance. So I think that I'm going to be doing this type of gradient scattered throughout. Maybe I'll do my hearts, all four of them, the same way. I haven't really decided for this version of the page. But since we've been actually been going for a little over an hour, I think that once I finish our heart here, we're going to go ahead and sign off and work on doing another scheduled color along for another time if you guys enjoyed this i would really love to probably start doing this a little more often let me know what you think in the comments let's see now i think that i'm gonna want my darkness so i'm gonna have blue on top and red on bottom ah here we go so starting with my dark i'm gonna lay it in nice and thick rolling it on there Get that top part going, and here we go. And yes, thank you, thank you so much, Heather, for that reminder of subscribing to the channel is gonna be so helpful to hear when I do go live. And then look at that, blue on top, purple to, to the pink color. Now I'm gonna bring that pink down further so that's, oh, that's beautiful. I love that. That was so great. Oh, really, husband? I should keep going, he says. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, maybe we'll go a little bit longer then, since uh, we've got permission from, from afar. <laughs> and my camera keeps going out, so I'm just going to reset that really quick. And then we're going to go ahead and keep coloring our heart gradients in. So I'm glad that everyone is excited over this first coloring, color along. I am so happy to have everyone join me today. This has been so much fun hanging out with you guys. All right. Well, I am so happy to hear that everyone would like to do more of this. That's great to hear. Now right here, I didn't put enough blue down there, so I actually want to add some more layer of that so that it can blend down when I bring my pink in. And I take my pink into the blue that I've already laid down and I'm kind of dragging it down into the rest of the paper. Now another thing to know everybody 
I printed this out on 65 pound paper. So the thicker the paper, the easier it is to work with your wet mediums. Oh, Chris, thank you. I am so happy to hear that. Thank you, everyone. I, this has been fantastic. I've really been enjoying it, too. Okay, so let's see. I've got a, my gradient there. Let's see. What should I do? <laughs> thank you. I'm so happy you enjoy my voice and my little bit of humor, which I do like to get out every now and then into my coloring pages, too. Oh, Heather, yes, cardstock. You must have a really nice printer to be able to use a thick cardstock. I assume it, it's thicker than the 65 pound that I'm using. What? How heavy is it that you're using? Let's see. I want to figure out what kind of outline I want to do here. Since I have purple banner here, I think I want to do purple banner type thing around my heart. Maybe even do the same smearing technique. And here we go. Let's bring that outer one. And because actually it's still a little wet here, I should be careful and use a brush instead so I can get into that small space easier. Boop, boop, boop. And here we go. Boop, boop, boop. Look at that. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy that you've been relaxed by it as well. Now, if anyone is coloring this, like I said, I would love to see, or even if you use any of these techniques that I've shown you today, I would love to see how you've put them into your coloring pages. So be sure to share them with me, because I like seeing your art too. And really, colorists are artists. Even if you're not drawing the original line art or the original coloring page, if it's not a line art, and it might be grayscale, a lot of people out there into the grayscale. I still think that colorists are artists as well. And color and being able to color is so therapeutic that everyone should have the opportunity to do it. 110 pound, nice. That's like my watercolor paper. I am jealous that you have a printer that can do that. If I want to get my coloring pages onto my watercolor paper, I have to transfer the image by hand if I want it to be exactly like the color page. Does anyone know how to transfer your images onto a thick paper? Even like say you want to do something on poster board or something. Have you ever learned techniques that help you to transfer your artwork? Now, if you haven't before and it's something that you're interested in learning, I can always uh, plan to do a video later to help with this idea. Now, this is a super secret trick, so shh, you shouldn't tell anyone like my art mentor who said, well, don't share this with anyone. This is super secret. So if I do, you have to promise me that you won't tell him, okay? Great deal. All right. So I like the way that that happened, but I think I want a little bit more of that hard line around the inner heart. Hmm, let me think about this. You know what? No, I think if I go further with that, I might mess that up. So I think I like the way that is. <clears throat> now, the other fun thing about having this type of poster or picture to work with, I have some intricate designs, but I also have some very spacious designs. So with a backdrop like this, you can add your own stuff to it. So you know how to do a pencil transfer, Jill. I see that. That's interesting. I'd love to learn about that. Using the chalk, too. Yes, I've actually seen that method as well. Ah, oh, plexiglass. And, oh, interesting. These are all very great techniques. Let's see now. Maybe I should start to move into all of me. What do you think? Let's go ahead and do that. Just a little bit more. So I've got my mixture of yellow and green on the outside, and then the pink to blue on the inside. So I'm thinking maybe I can reverse that on here. Let's see. Here's another thing that we can do. Is that? All right, Heather, that sounds good. Then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my method, and it is going to be a very easy method that takes tracing basically and you're gonna use a special material 
have to go with your tracing. And it's almost like your the chalk techniques and stuff, people putting the coal, uh, what is it, the charcoal or whatever on their paper on the reverse side and then, and then using a pencil to draw on top. It's very similar to this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down this here. And you know what, actually, I think I kind of like the way that yellow outline is looking too. I might have to run with the yellow as my big outline. So now on the inside, I want to start to play around with my color gradients. So let's think about this now. I've got darkness on the outside, right? So I think I'm gonna have my darkness on top here and light on bottom. So I'm gonna try and remember my, my remember this and remind myself to do that. But I am going to start with a gradient down. So laying down the wax. And this is also helpful if you're doing this on regular uh, computer paper that you're printing out. Laying down a foundation of wax is helpful because then the gel pen doesn't quite go through the paper as much. Let's see, so I'm working with my yellows and my greens now. So let's see. Let's make sure that I remember that. And I'm going to bring some of this green on top and I'm going to roll it. It's got to give, give, and I add into there. There we go. Now it's starting to come on. And smear it down, smear it down. Lovely, lovely. There, and smear it down. And I put nice pressure in there so that it's getting in there. And you know how when you color down with your wax crayons, it doesn't quite get all in there. You've got these little divots and stuff. So my gel is filling in those little divots too. Look at that. That looks so nice. I like the way that looks. And back, back, back up here, add some more in there and smear it down. All right, and I think that I'll just do a little bit here too. Smear, smear, smear. And oh goodness, I do love green. Green is such a fun, happy color. And you're thinking, think of life and growing things. All right. I'm so glad that you guys think that this is turning out pretty and you're enjoying my method. This is definitely a lot of fun way to make your pens look nice and smooth too so that you don't end up with all those hard pen lines too. And the fact that I was able I printed this out in that light gray scale makes it so that it's so much easier for me to color in the line art. Now most of my artwork that I do put up for people to download is in the black line art. But again, like I said, I do take special requests, especially you have my attention first club members. <laughs> and Tanya, have a great evening. I hope you enjoy your dinner and I hope it's super yummy and you have a relaxing night. See you next time. And thank you for joining us. I definitely had fun. Look at that yellow green. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's see. <clears throat> and I think that this pen I've been using a lot. You can always tell because the ink starts disappearing here. I haven't used as much green. Oh, gotta reset that camera, silly camera. And um, resetting the camera. So just like with your pencils, you might end up with very short pencils. <laughs> I've noticed that certain gel pens, I, I gravitate towards certain colors because like I said, what's your color palette? And you can join the club at my website, Jill. And I think that I will provide a link to that if there's not one that someone can grab really quick. Uh, but suzylilo.com is my website. I actually have a little sticker right here that shows you my domain name. So if you wanted to run over there, you can whenever you have a moment. 
Otherwise, I'm going to put a link in the description, especially after we finish this live this session. I'm going to make sure that the description has all the perfect information so anyone who wants to watch the replay can. And I am going to make this coloring page permanently free and available. So if anyone is going to do this replay later in the future, you can actually download this and go ahead and color it. All right, everybody. Let's see. Look at this. Yes, I know we also have, I have a lot of coloring friends all over the world. So it was really cool to hear someone from Spain checking in. I know I've got some people in the Netherlands even. And I notice <clears throat> when I pay attention to the stats on my website, I see people from all over the globe checking in on me. So it's, it's very fun to see that this is a hobby and a, and a, a wellness relaxation technique that everyone can get into and share with me. And I'm so happy I can bring this to you guys. So definitely if you want to join my club and get a free page on a weekly basis, you can find out that information on my website. All right, I'm going to go ahead and keep on going here. I think for right now, I'm just going to keep that as a yellow out backdrop. But later, I might possibly turn this into an orangish color. Let's see. I'm not sure. It's one of those things where I'm just winging it. <laughs> and yes, Heather, I do believe I have that in the event description. So you can also check it out over there. So let's see. Let's attempt to do this without the wax. And just to see what it looks like. So here I was doing it with the brush technique. I like using my brush technique on wax because it's easier to smear. So let me show you what it looks like if I'm going to try it without the wax. So I like starting with my dark on top. And there's that. So I'm going to blend that down. And this is still possible, especially if you have nice thick, laying it down nice and thick. And smoothing it down. Now the only difference here is without that wax I am rubbing this more on that paper and giving that friction on the paper a little bit more. So if I focus too hard on one spot I might chance balling up my paper. So I'm trying to be very gentle with that. So there, see how far down that, that smears? Oh lovely. I do like a good smearing of gel pen. Yeah. Bring that one down. So I did that nice and quick and pushed down with my pressure so that way I'm doing it while it's wet. Tracing this here and bringing this over. So I wonder what is everyone's preferred timing to watch any of these types of live videos. I kind of wasn't sure what a good time period was. We happened to choose the afternoon for this one because I had people checking in from all over the world. So I thought it would be easier to meet everyone for the first time in the middle of the day with my schedule timeline. So when you guys do your watch live videos, when do you like to watch them? When is your ideal time? Now, if I've missed anyone's comments to, to say anything, if you've shared anything in the comments that I might have missed, don't worry, because I plan on checking in on the comments again after this. And I plan to give everyone a proper response, because I really like to interact with everyone. Yeah, see, and now I just kind of pulled that one up into the green. My green dried right there, so I've got kind of a hard line right there, but it's okay. I was showing you guys the difference when I don't lay down my wax. It is giving us that idea of what's going on. So see, I my smear went down, and I got this really interesting kind of triangular shape in there. And I don't know, do I like that? Mm, I think that I want to fix it a little. So I'm going to add to the outer portion a little extra gel. And I'm going to blend it in, drag that out so I soften that shape there a little bit more. That looks 
looks good. I think I like it. So you like afternoons, Chris, huh? Yeah. And I'm watching a lot of videos. It's I haven't really gotten into it too much for artist stuff. I would love to check out other art channels that are live. Um, but I've been into watching live videos from musicians. Those are a lot of fun to watch. What are some of your favorite musicians, whoever is left watching right now? I'd love to hear some of your favorites. Oh, look at this. I'm going to go ahead and keep going with this technique without my laying down my crayon. That way we can get this lettering to pop out quicker. And I know it's more satisfying when you can do things quickly, too. And I think that's the other thing I like about this blending technique. Flexible is good. Heather, I love being flexible too. I might actually schedule them throughout different time periods. Maybe I can do some in the afternoon, some in the morning. I think that if I do things in the afternoon, I might need to involve, involve my children some more. I bet you they would have fun coloring under a camera with you guys. I know when I first started doing these videos on YouTube, I noticed my eldest daughter, she started to actually mimic my stage voice a little bit, like when you're talking about things, you know, when you're teaching, and she started to describe the way that she was coloring and the techniques that she's using. I really like Linkin Park too, actually. It doesn't matter if it's relaxing or not, it matters whether it moves you. <laughs> Well, that's great. I got to vote for coloring with my kids under the camera. I think Cadence and Harmonics will love that idea. Yeah. We are also a music house, too. We are a bunch of musicians and singers here. So that's kind of another reason why I like hearing about who your favorite musicians are. It's always fascinating to hear. No, oh, they move you, huh? <laughs> I love dancing too. So when I start to getting into the dancing mood, there's a lot of that, uh, what are they, the electronic dance music. I think they're calling EDM these days. So yeah, I like some of those artists that get me up and dancing too. But honestly, I like to be able to sing along with my music. So being able to have an artist that I'm familiar with is always a good thing so I can sing along. And it's actually lately been nice. My kids have been getting into learning lyrics too. So I think actually there's a an all of me lyric from John, what is it, Legend, I believe, that my daughter likes to sing too. <laughs> and yes, it's very clear by our children's names that we are into music, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we get that all the time whenever we're checking in somewhere and they ask their names and they will look at us and, you're a musician, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so happy you think they're beautiful names. I love them too. And I always joke around about harmonics because we gave her the X at the end. And either she's going to love us or she's going to think it's funny that we put an X at the end and say, why'd you do that, Mom and Dad? I don't understand. But that's okay because I like doing things differently. I spell my name Susie with a Z. <laughs> so I have to go for the X because the X is also very cool. And yes, John Legend, beautiful, beautiful body of music. Right, look at that. Now I think that the difference that I had here is, okay, that camera needs to be reset. We're gonna have to talk with Nikon, I think, about this resetting of the camera so that I can learn more about uh, that and how to fix it. So maybe we'll contact them directly and share this video with them and show how I'm starting to, you know, showcase even their technology. So come on, Nikon, let's work together and get this fixed, okay? All right, now back to pointing out something here that I noticed. I didn't lay my stuff down thick on the wax as much. 
And over here, I was doing thick because I didn't have the wax on there. So it actually popped that out a lot more. I can visually see it. I'm not sure if you can on the camera as well. Oh, Edie's music. Oh, that's a lot of fun to dance to right there. Oh, yes. I think that the 60s and the 70s era were a lot of fun for me. But like I said earlier, I am a sucker for jazz. So take me way, way, way back and that's going to put a smile on my face. So let's see now. You know what? What would be fun is this type of purple that I'm doing here in this technique, so I've got yellow in here, purple and bringing that in, that's going to really bring that out a lot more. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that next with olive. So we'll get my yellow and we are going to just fill it. Let's see, let me make sure that I'm not too wet first. I love, I don't know if you can see it, but my fingers are really sparkly right now. We always joke around that glitter is the plague. And once you've got glitter somewhere, it's everywhere. And as a former performer, I used to do stage performance when I was younger. I remember all the glitter that was used on my fellow performer makeup and costuming and just by the end of the night, we all had glitter everywhere. It didn't matter. It's like you would go and sit down and go potty, and it's like, ooh, how did glitter get there? <laughs> it's everywhere. So, yeah, once you got it, it spreads and it's everywhere. But glitter makes it so pretty. And a little bit more here. So had I done this originally and just did the base, I could have just gone through and gone over my line art and then done the filling in. But right now I decided to go ahead and go back fill in over it and I think I need to use my skinny side so I gotta go up onto the tip here this is where coloring with your crayons in big areas on its side helps because then you end up with a nice tip but you, they also have sharpeners that you can use for crayons but I'm not as fond of the way they sharpen my crayons so I would rather just sharpen my crayons like this. I just scribble on a piece of paper. So if I ended up dulling out my crayon, I'll just go in here and start to mold it and do this. So that is the way that I like to sharpen my crayons instead of using the little crayon sharpener. <laughs> Your house is nothing but glitter, huh? Oh my goodness, that must be a very, very shiny, sparkly home then. Do you have lots of lighting that makes your glitter shimmer even more? Let's see, where's my purple? Here it is. So now I'm going to start to work on that. And that's the thing about when we create these coloring pages with the glitter in it, it's got to be displayed just right. Um, taking pictures and sharing it on our groups, it's kind of tough. And that's why it's kind of fun to do videos and then you can kind of move the lighting and then it'll make that shimmer. But let's see, I wanna do repeat this type of texture and technique now in here so that I can bring that line art out a bit, pop out those words, and boop, 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 and blend it and make it a little fuzzy. Boop, boop, boop. And I did print this out a lot smaller so that I felt like I could get the coloring done a lot quicker because at a full size, this might have taken a little bit more time to do. And I think that because it's smaller, I'm having a little bit of difficulty in those details, but that's okay because we're going to work with it and we'll fix it later. And in art, it is a-okay to have mistakes because there's always got there's always a way to find a way to incorporate it or cover it up let's see bring that fuzzy fuzz it out fuzz it out and if you're curious about me blending with the brush and whether it's actually ruining my brush. I had my husband ask me one day, he says, well, aren't you concerned about your brush? 
Now the nice thing is that these are actually a water base pen. So any of this stuff that gets onto my brush, I can actually just go and I'll just under a faucet and I'll just do this. Or if I have a wet rag, like on this other side, you'll see my watercolor stuff. You know, you can just get it wet and then wipe it off and it's gonna wash right out. So it's not like something like oily or, or acrylic that's a plastic that's gonna get on there really hard. So it's okay if my gel pens dry on there during the blending because I can clean them up later. And because I'm working in such a small area, I wanna try not to lay that down too thick. Otherwise, when I do the spread and smear, it's going to go too far, which I think is what happened right here. I put just a little too much right there. And there we go. Blend and smear, blend and smear. I'm really glad that everyone is enjoying YouTube now. It seems like I've had quite the successful run now for other than my camera having to be restarted. So this is this is great news that you guys were all able to hop on over here. I had actually heard about another network out there. Has anyone heard about Rumble? I, I'm not even sure what that is. But someone last night told me about it and I said, you should start your own channel there. But I don't know. I think I still have to look into it. I'm, I'm so far, I'm starting to learn about YouTube and Facebook Live and I've been really satisfied with where I'm going with YouTube. So maybe when uh, I advertise any of this stuff on Facebook, I can always provide the link over to YouTube. Pushing that in. Oh, I really like the way that's coming out. Oh, MeWe. I am actually on MeWe. I just haven't really gotten into that network so much. I'm not sure if they do video over there, though. I think that Rumble is more equivalent to a YouTube channel. Um, but MeWe, I am on there. I'm also on Minds and on a dysphoria pod it's like I've been checking out all of these networks and trying to get a feel for them because I know everyone is nervous out there about Facebook so everyone's trying to check out these other networks but I think you're probably gonna still find me on Facebook because I run a lot of my business over there on Facebook and I have a lot of my audience there that I like to showcase my work I like the way that's coming out. This is really lovely. I think the thing that I'm missing though is that because I added this purple around here, it kind of lost a little bit of my all in here. So I think I need to pop that out more. Ah, let's see. So you can do live on there, huh? Well, I might have to go and take a look at that. Maybe the, the software we're using was going to be uh, broadcasting to two places. So I went to Facebook and YouTube. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there's a way that I can figure out how to go to MeWe too. So I, I'll take a look into that, that's good to know. So I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit in here and I'm filling in that backdrop a bit more because I feel like I lost my text too much. So I'm gonna darken that up and make it pop out more. There we go. Yep, that helps a whole bunch. I really dig that. Now my stuff is dry there. And another reset of the camera Nikon. I'm going to count how many times I had to reset my camera during this broadcast. And that will be in my email when we send it to over to Nikon. Let's see now. All right, so I'm going to pop that out even more here. Boop, 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 boop. Spread that a bit. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 
not so familiar with the MeWe platform. I know that when it first popped up many years ago, I created an account over there. And I still haven't quite gotten used to their platform. Um, I've started to get attracted over at Mines, though. There's a lot of very, very smart people over there. And, uh, and they're very eloquent with how they say things. So if you're ever on Mines.com, look me up. I think actually my username there is Lilo. I try to have Susie Lilo everywhere, but for some reason I ended up with Lilo over there. I might have to talk to them and see if I can get that changed though. That way all of my channels are the same. There we go. That's helping to bring that all out again. so that I can spread it around. All right. Okay. So I think that because I chose to do this at a whim and I decided to do this backdrop after, I am kind of dirtying up my actual text a little bit. So it's kind of creating almost the look of more shading in there. Because you know, purple being the opposite of the color wheel. That's starting to give that shadow darkness in there if it starts to get go into the yellow. So that's yellow, purple is a good way to add shade, shadow and darkness to a yellow subject. And there we go. And I think if I have too much on the brush while I'm blending, I can always just go like this and wipe it off. Let's see, I gotta bring that A sharpness back in right there. And all the gear. And that definitely helped bring that back out. I'm so glad that it came out nice. There we go. I can always go back later after this dries up because I don't want to mess with it right now. It's still real damp. And I could probably put more layers of yellow and green to help bring that out. Oh, I think I need to actually, there, I missed a spot over here. And spread that in a bit more. Think that I am very pleased with how that's turning out. So I'm going to want to do the same thing inside the middle of the A so that it finishes with defining my lettering. Put it around and then blend, 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 blend. There we go. Softened it up. Excellent. Well, I'm very pleased with how far I've gone with this. So we've been together now for about an hour and 45 minutes. So I am going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. I want to thank everyone for coming here today to hang out with me for this long. You guys have been amazing, and I've learned so much from you for doing these live sessions. So if you haven't yet checked it out, go ahead and take a look at my website, suzylelo.com. And over there I have my Clubhouse subscription. I have even print books that you can look into this one being my adult coloring book and I have a children's coloring book as well but if you don't like print books I also have the electric download PDF version and take a look and again don't forget to share your pictures with me because I really want to see how they turn out and after I finish this version too I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you guys too so be sure to subscribe over here at YouTube and go ahead and like my page at Facebook because I want to stay connected with you guys, you my new coloring friends. Thank you, thank you so much.
and thank you Jill and Chris and Heather and everyone else who was here earlier, including my husband and my daughters, Cadence and Harmonics. You guys, thank you. So much love. I will see you again soon.